different student athletes, um, you know, bringing you different information. And I feel like we haven't told our story fully. You know, we hit here and there on, you know, oh, I've experienced this or I experienced that, but we haven't been able to tell the story from start to finish about our student athlete journey post-college and prior to college. So I think we're going to start by going with Dana. First off, I want to know why you had an acting shirt on today. <laughs> That's why I had a phone back up with this. I, I feel like, like I told my boy Cab, man, I was like, I'm on like a tour. Every team we ran through and demolished, you know what I mean? Cash <laughs> show support in that way. You know, you know what I mean? I'm on a tour like, it's like like Miles Garrett. He wears his quarterbacks that he sacked and yeah, put them in the grave. You know what I mean? So that's it's crazy. like that. You know what For those of y'all who don't know, Akron and Kent State is a big rivalry. And he worked out this morning. I was there. I was there. <laughs> In an Akron shirt, man. I did, I did, I did. I got it. Well, I got Ken on now, so we good, man. That's like an Ohio State student working out in a Michigan shirt. <laughs> or a Duke student working out in a North Carolina shirt. Man, you can't do stuff like that, man. Hey, man we here. We got that work, though. You know what I'm saying? That's all that work. matters. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's going crazy today. Hey, man. It's like, it felt like a freaking, like, you ever see a gorilla bear? A gorilla bear? You never seen one, right? <laughs> That's what I am. Like, like I'm a makeshift, <laughs> like type of like animal. Like, I go nuts. Like, <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Not know, the work I was crazy. Yeah, I was right? witnessing. Um, but no, I wanted to make sure that we got into you know Dana's story and everything that he's been through as a student athlete. Um, what he's doing now is amazing. A lot of stuff in the community, working in the school district. Um, you know, anywhere that you go, you'll probably see him if it's involving sports. So we want to start from the beginning. The beginning, the Crawford days. Ooh, the old Crawford days. Um, I say my dad, for real, like, you know what I mean? Coming from, like, being the first boy, being named after my dad, my dad being an athlete himself, and I think he felt, in his mind, he fell short to where he should have been. So, like, I think straight from the wound, I got the pressure put on me. Uh, like, you know what I mean? Just straight off the rip, being named Dana Brown Jr. is just like, all right, you better hold it down. Yeah, you gotta hold it down. <laughs> you gotta hold it down. And it's crazy because if you go to communities that's like tight knit communities mm -hmm. like, like ours, that last name hold weight, man. Hold weight. Hold weight. And, and just like now, it's just like, there go a little dang. Yeah. Little dang. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it just, that's what it is. So, like, I think. He's the one that got me in sports because I remember from, I remember being like four years old, playing like every sport possible, uh -huh. like hockey, like stuff talk, like that. Talk about that because a lot of kids now, you know, they grow up and they're like focused on one sport. Right. You know, whether it's football, it's basketball, they're either playing a sport and then they're training for the sport in the off season. You... And like a lot of people in the community, you did, you played hockey, baseball, basketball, football, anything that you name, you know, we tried it. Right, absolutely. And I think, and I think playing multiple sports just makes you that much of a better of an athlete. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I never in a million years, like, played hockey. Like, I feel like that's like something like when I'm talking to people, they're like, oh, what sports you play? I used to play hockey when I was a kid. Like, that sounds like, that's amazing to me. Like, you know what I mean? And to be honest, like. I really didn't, like, the, the sport that I succeeded the most in was football, obviously. But my favorite sport was baseball. And you know that, like, yeah. baseball was my sport. Yeah, it was. Like, <laughs> I mean, I was like a dog in baseball. But, like, just just it's, things played out and, you know, I ended up where I ended. But, you know, as a kid being, you know, five years old, four or five years old, playing everything, I was just a fan of the game. Mm -hmm. Like, my dad used to tell me, like, you can name every 
every Pittsburgh Power player, every Miami Dolphin, because I'm a Dolphin fan. Yeah. Like, that's when Marino was playing. Like, you know what I mean? So, I was able to, like, really be a fan of the game. Like, I sit there because he'll watch football. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So, I sit there and watch the game. Like, not running around like the rest of the kids. Like, I'm watching the game. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Well, I think a lot of kids don't do nowadays. But, like, I was, like, a fan of sports. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's, that's a testament to your pops is oh, introducing yeah. it to you. No, nah, absolutely. I think and, and him being a him being a fan of sports, you know what I mean. That's what anyone I think. All right, I'm a fan of sports. Let me introduce this to my kid. Let me introduce this to my offspring's. You know what I mean. Introduce them to something great. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. That they find a passion in. Yeah. You know what I mean. So sports teach a lot of life lessons. What's the biggest lesson you learned through sport? Like the biggest life lesson I learned through sports, I would have to say like just the relationship piece. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean. So like. And it's just coming from like treating the janitor the same way I treat the CEO type mm-hmm. deal. Like, you know what I mean? You have that respect for them without even having a conversation with them yet. I'm going to respect you. You know what I mean? As a man, I want to respect you just because that's how I was raised. And it's, it's a potential relationship piece that's, that can be built mm-hmm. into something great. Yeah, so yeah. I think, I think that, that's probably the biggest uh, thing I got from that uh, and whatnot. The biggest I got from that, um, and also just the the competition. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? I compete in everything I do in my life. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And it ain't even like, say me and you, we're going for a position. All right? It's not even me hating. It's just like, man, I hope you fall because yeah. I want to do better. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But I'm rooting for you still, but I still want to do better than you. Yeah. That's just the competition that I have in my mindset that's been instilled in me. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And it, it's not like, like I said, it's not hating. You know what I mean? It's just like, all right, yeah, I want, I, I want you to do great. I want you the best, whatever. Yeah. If we go for that same position, yeah, oh, no, nah, it's me or you. I'm yeah. going after it. You know what yeah. I mean? And then when I get there, hey, what can we do to help you now? Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 that's all it is. So, and, competition. And that's that's crazy what you said. What can we help to do? You? What can we do to help you now? Right. A lot of people miss that. Mm-hmm. Right? Whenever you get a position or you get an opportunity to do something great, reach back to the people who need you know, help. Right, right. Right? Because that's how it's like reach one, teach one. You know what I mean? If we're able to go back and grab the people that needs to be grabbed to, to move forward, then a the whole community can grow. Right. And I think I think people lose sight of that. And I think a lot of people like just think about like now you know what goes on today. A lot of people selling clothes. A lot of people getting into fitness. Mm-hmm. Just because we're selling shirts, you sell a different shirt than me. Don't mean I gotta be in competition with yeah, you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I, I want to outsell you, of course, hundred uh-huh. percent. But that don't mean I'm gonna poop on you every chance I get. Yeah. Uh, you don't like my shirt? Well, Ty selling uh, these one shirts. They go crazy too. Like you know what I mean? No, I ain't gonna poop on you, but you best believe I'm gonna outsell you. I'm gonna, I want to outsell you. And that Louis Vuitton and Gucci, Louis Vuitton and Dior. That's you know what I mean. <laughs> they both selling thousands, apparel, millions. <laughs> you know? and and there's enough out there for everybody. Man. Exactly. So if you're able to help the next person, especially if you're not both at the top, if you're both right. building Climbing, and you're yeah. able to help that next person do that, man. Absolutely. And, and I think that's a that. Is a lot through through sports, you know what I mean? And not only the people that you know and the people that you're comfortable around, you know, the people that you grew up with, you meet a whole man. bunch of different type of people whenever you play sports, man. And not even only in college, like whenever you go to AAU tournaments or mm-hmm. baseball trips or anything like that, you're exposed to so many different types of people from different backgrounds and different upbringings. Listen, and I, I look back, you know, reflecting on things in my life, some of my best friends were guys that I met 10 years ago in college. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, not to say, like, I don't have some of my best friends around here, but, like, some some of the guys I talk to every day, every day, live in a whole opposite side of the country. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you build those relationships that I just met you 
And our bond is deeper than the person I knew for a whole 20 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've just been knowing you for 10 and it's deeper than that. Yeah. So that's these volumes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that happens through sports. That happens through sports, man. And it's crazy, but it's true. Absolutely. You know, sports really bonds you, man. So whenever you was young, you said baseball was always your thing. When did you realize that, like, I can be really good at football? Uh, Well, I was... And this ain't like no to the horn. I was good at like, you know, I was an athlete. I, was, I wasn't never not good at football, but I just enjoy playing baseball more. So to, to answer that question, it's like to see where I, when I decided to walk away from baseball was my fresh, after my freshman year in high school. Like, you know, just talking, having to talk with a coach, and they, they, told, they told me to list five Division One athletes that came from a key sport that played baseball, that for baseball, got baseball scholarships. And I couldn't, I couldn't name one. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it, it put in that perspective. And then it, then I just like, all right, I'm focused on football. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just like, right then and there, like, I knew I could do, I knew I was going to do something. That just made it clear, I'm going to do it through football. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you played defense a lot in high school. But when you were a kid, you played like quarterback and running back <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> Do you feel? Hey, but you were always a bigger kid. Mm -hmm. You was never like a skinny, mm -hmm. skinny dude. But you were athletic enough to play those different positions. Do you think that you were able to do that because you were a multi-sport athlete? Absolutely, absolutely, wholeheartedly, absolutely. Because uh, looking back, I was I was a running back, quarterback up until like freshman year, eighth grade, freshman year. Um, but I was able to do that because I had hand-eye coordination from baseball. You know what I mean? I was running from basketball. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And I was just always active. I was outside. Like, you know what I mean? So it it wasn't it wasn't just I just wasn't never one dimensional. Like, you know what I mean? So like being a bigger guy, like and when I say bigger, like I wasn't like I was like solid. Like, you know what I mean? I remember one of my good friends, mom called me Chub Rock. Like, you know what I mean? Like you you rock solid. Like, you know what I mean? Like but it just being an athlete, just those those multiple sports allowed me and shaped me into being able to be a quarterback, running back, whatever the case may be. And I think being a running back quarterback in those young age is the reason why I had such good footwork, mm -hmm. so good with my hands yeah. as a defensive lineman. Because now, think about being a bigger lineman trying to block a guy like me who can run, who got good footwork. It's yeah, it's tough. Who's an athlete, like, it's tough. So, like, that helped me. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So, transitioning, running back, quarterback, running back, quarterback, D lineman, it was all new. Now, once I picked up, I'm like, oh, I got, I got stuff in the arsenal that I ain't even seen yet. Uh -huh. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I think that helped in my success in high school big time. Yeah, being a multi sport athlete is huge, man, because whenever you get there, you know, to stick into your position, there's a whole bunch of things that you can take from different sports that'll help you in your primary sport. And listen, like, and it's not easy. So let me let me let me clarify. Let me tell the story. So coming up to sophomore year, imagine you said I was running back quarterback all my years coming up sophomore year. I knew I, I enjoyed playing D line. So once they moved me D line, I was okay with that. I like making quarterback sack a quarterback, whatever. If I wasn't getting the ball, I'm cool with playing defense hitting people. Uh -huh. So you get to high school and you know you gotta have an offensive position. So I'm a freshman, I mean not a freshman, I'm a sophomore. Uh I'm one of the bigger name sophomores, like so they're looking forward to me or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh so we go to summer camp. Uh Coach Smith, the legendary Coach Smith. It's an offensive day. It's the, they break up in the offensive positions. <laughs> I go with the running backs. <laughs> So they looking for me. Uh, Where's Brown at? Where's Brown? They down there with the lineman. <laughs> Brown! <laughs> hey, Brown! Get your butt down here! You a lineman? No, I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't. He said, you don't want to be a lineman? You, you ain't no lineman, then get out of here. All right. <laughs> Took my stuff up. <laughs> Took my stuff up. Go home. You know what I mean? At this time, I, I'm living with my mom, whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, what not. So I'm at my mom's house. My dad called me. Hey, little 
Hey man, what you doing here? You walk out practice? Man, they try to make me a lineman. I ain't no lineman, man. I, <laughs> I ain't no lineman, man. I'm like, what, man? Uh, uh, I got family over at Clarion. And uh, what I said, man, we, I'm going to go play for Clarion. I'm going to play for Central Catholic or Sarah Catholic, whatever one. But I ain't playing for the port or whatever. Now I ain't playing line, whatever. He said, all right, man, all right, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do, or whatever. So the next day, I ain't go to practice. You know what I mean? That's over. He calls me, he's like, man, just go to practice. You know what I mean? They said they got plans for you, they doing this, doing that. So I go to practice. They said, hey, go to <laughs> I, I ain't coming back. I probably ain't coming back. So they, they took a conversation, like, listen, I know you don't want to play lineman. You're not an offensive lineman, you're a defensive lineman. Just, you know, you need to be, you know what I mean? Just to have some, like, you know, some depth here, whatever. I'm like, all right, as long as I'm playing D line. Like, you know what I mean? Cool. Yeah, yeah. So I continue through summer workout. We get to uh, summer camp. We get to summer camp. So, you know, back then we had a lot of, like, you know, we had 85, 90 kids. Yeah. So, sophomores practice separate. I got called up the first day to go up to varsity. Mm -hmm. So, we doing one on ones. That's what I'm shining. Dogging them. Dogging the varsity <laughs> lineman. Oh, okay. Let's, let's kill them. The second practice, the afternoon practice, the lineman uh, offensive practice. Oh, you don't even know I'm there. Like, I don't even know, know I'm there. All right, go. Keep, keep it up. It's to the point to where, like, our D-line coach, man, this is our starter. And you remember Peeps, Peeps a dog. Yeah. They ain't nothing Peeps starter. Imagine, they ain't nothing Peeps starter. Coach said he will not play a snap on defense until he decides he wants to play offense. <sighs> I guess I ain't playing then. That's <laughs> that was my man. Hey, I swear to God, God, I swear to God. I'm like, man, what? Once I found out, it's like, man, you got to – Presence on offense. I ain't playing offense line. I'm a running back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a running back. I'm a running back. I'm a running back. I'm gonna hit people with it. Wouldn't do it. Whole sophomore year. I'm traveling with the team, ain't playing it. They would not play me on defense. I'm probably behind Peeps. Peeps are senior that year. I'm a sophomore. I'm the best player out there defensively. Yeah, yeah. And not playing me. <laughs> Just because my pride got in the way of that. That's stupid. Stupid. Stupid as heck on my end. Oh. Like, you know what I mean? Stupid as heck on my end. So, like, that right there, like, it, it, so to say it wasn't easy to have that mindset to transition from running back to lineman, yeah. knowing that, all right, I got to help the team out with this to do that. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I kind of, I didn't screw myself, essentially, because I, obviously I ended up uh, yeah. playing and working out. But I, I look at my numbers that I had in the two years that I started or whatever, and... I imagine like another year that like I'm breaking records, I'm doing this, like you know what I mean, dog. Oh, and and at this time, like I said, Peeps, he's a uh, all conference type player. He's demanding double teams. I'm new to it, mm -hmm. so they don't even know they got to double team yeah, me. They I'm mean, had hella one on ones, so I'm just, I'm eating. I'm gonna be eating, but just being being dumb, just being young, and just not even really. Just not even caring, like, yeah. you know what I mean? It was, it was tough. And football is a sport where you got to put the team first. You got to. You got to put the team first when you're playing football. Basketball, you can kind of get away with it yeah. because one man can really take over a game of basketball. Football, one man can, unless it's, unless you like Michael Vick or something like right, that. Yeah. And running around going crazy at the quarterback position. But still, you need your linemen to block. You mm -hmm. need your receivers to catch the ball. You need your running backs to make plays. Like, And, and that's where I was, I was a young guy. Hey, even like... Even my confidence level still to this day, I still like somewhat think about that, but I just know I'm a little smarter. But I felt like as a defensive lineman in the defense we played, I controlled the game. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And, and if you're, you're not a defensive player, if you don't feel like that, I feel like. Yeah. So, like, I control, like, man, what? I ain't getting no run off. I ain't getting no pass off. Like, you know what I mean? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to dog them, and that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Like, that's my mindset. Like, this game got to go through me. Like, you know what I mean? And that was. That was my mindset as a as a youngster, as a sophomore, without the work ethic, like without the you know what I mean, without the mature piece. So once I gathered all that together, and then in the, the following year, and still had that same mindset. Now this time, I'm smarter. I'm, I'm like now I'm like all right, I just pick a position. I know I ain't, I know I ain't playing on offense. Like you know what I mean? They need a break. I go do two reps. I had that mindset, and they knew I was a defensive player. Like you know what I mean? So like once I understood that, I'm like. And it all worked out. So junior year, I jumped on the scene. Yeah. Like, they didn't know who I was. Like, I remember playing Penn Trafford, and they called him my coming out party. 
Meanwhile, I've been dogging all year. They called my coach. Had 22, uh, uh, 22 tackles. Ooh, that's crazy. 22 tackles and three sacks. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? That, so that's a crazy stat. Like, you know what I mean? So, on the D-line. On the D-line. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, 22 tackles, three sacks. And I'm reading the news clipping, and my coach, my uh, major league coach brought it to me, uh, said, man, they talking about this shit coming out party. Like, you ain't been a dog. You ain't been a dog. I'm like, let me read it. I'm like, oh, yeah, they, they got something coming for them. So <laughs> from there, it was just up. It's just like, so, like, once I put all that piece together, everything fell in uh, fell in this place. Dominate junior year, success. And then that's when everything picked up as far as recruiting-wise. Yeah. And it just took off from there. Yeah, so so you started getting recruited junior year after after you had that yeah. coming out party. Yeah, right, right. Finn Trafford. Um, what was the first school that you spoke to? The first school that I spoke to, I remember, I remember talking to Dayton. Dayton okay. was the first school that came by. Dayton was the first school, but he disrespected me. Like, and I say that because it was after. It was like, it was like maybe like after the second or third week of the junior season, just coming in just to talk, whatever, see what we got. And he he did some like arrogant stuff that just didn't sit with me right, and like. He had this little weak ring, like, you know what I mean? And I went against the wall, and I think he was talking to one of the seniors or whatever. And uh, Coach Smith said, oh, this is Dana Brown, you know, defense lineman. He, he's a stud, you know what I mean, this and that. And he said, he said, oh, you know, well, if you're a stud like they say, I'll be coming back and help you try to get one of these. Okay. <laughs> that was a hoop school. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, that's what I'm just like. I'm just like. Yeah, like, I'm just like, like, yeah, like, I'm just like, I'm like. Okay. Then sure enough, they came back around. Coach Smith, uh, come get me from class, and just like, hey, you know, you got a couple schools down there, whatever. I said, who down there? And he mentioned one of them. I said, no, I got a test. I ain't going down there. I don't care about the test. But I was just like, I ain't going down there. Like, you know what I mean? I ain't. You know what I mean? So it's just once once I told Coach Smith that, like, once he got that bad for me, that like. I'm not talking to that small school. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, he wouldn't even like mention anything to me about that. So yeah. like, that that's the first school that really, that talked to me, that set a bad taste in me, a bad taste in my mouth and made me say like, oh yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, I'm gonna make you eat the word, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Don't disrespect me like that. Who was your grades like at that time? Uh, so my junior year, my grades, I was always middle of the road, average. So I, uh, A, A, B, couple C's, and and uh, sprinkling like a deer F just on like BSing oh, around. Sick. No, seriously. <laughs> and I I fought for so long. Okay, so in the beginning, I talked about how my dad was so like on it, whatever. So like growing up, I was a all A student, whatever, uh, uh, and whatnot. And I, I would get so say I dropped from a ninety six to an eighty seven or something. Man, I get my ass whooped. Like my dad wasn't playing. I'm like, man, what you dropping t nine points for, man? You playing around the school? That's your problem. Da -da -da, this and that. So walking home, I'm preparing for an ass whoop. Like you know what I mean? I'm trying to like, I'm putting a notebook in my butt. So like, try to like know when to move, whatever. So like, I used to always like, just like, I used, to, like I loved him for it, but like I hated it. Like it's just like, man, it ain't that serious, bro. Like you know what I mean? So like. When when my parents went through their divorce, their split, whatever, I took full advantage of stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, man, what? Like, I ran with it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's just like, I never could really get out of that. Like, you know what I mean? So this happened, they, I maybe like, starting like seventh grade. Like, you know what I mean? To so where it's just like, I got a 50. I know how to change the grade. Change the grade real quick. <laughs> Fake side. Like, I'm doing, doing dumb stuff like that. And I just could never get out of that funk, but like I was smart enough to know, like, all right, if I want to go D one, I got at least do this, do that, mm -hmm. and I knew how to manage the school. Like it's just like school's easy. Yeah. You just gotta show up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So once I learned that piece, it's just like you just gotta show up and not be an asshole. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. show respect to your teachers. Like it was to the point to where like there's teachers calling me DB. Like, you know what I mean? Just because I had a relationship with them. Like, you know what I mean? Now, not to say that every teacher is, is like that, but there was a lot of times where it was it was all good. Like, you know what I mean? So, my grades around there was like average, whatever. But I uh, around that time, I started feeling myself. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And I, I'm not, I'm, I was mature enough to really try to catch it before it got too late. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Because I recall a time where a teacher, uh, 
I being a be not really even being a jerk, like just not realizing she has a job too. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? So we're taking notes or whatever. She's speeding through it, whatever. I'm just like, yo, can you slow down? Like, you know what I mean? Disrespectful. Like, yo, can you slow down? And then she said, they're not gonna be slowing down for you next uh when you leave to go to college or whatever. I said, Well, I ain't there yet, so I need you to slow down. I'm being an asshole. Uh -huh. And she said, I don't know, she said, I, I can't wait to be a fly on the wall to see you to see you uh, end up back here when you can't handle these notes uh, when you're in college or something, something like that. Like, you know what I mean? So I was just like, I said something, a rebuttal smart back or whatever. And it was just like, that always stuck in my head when I got to college. So it was just like, dang, but yeah, grades was average. <laughs> I, I feel that. I feel that. So Bayton was the first school. You ended up going to Kent State. Yeah. There, Kent was the first one to offer me. Okay, so yeah. you went with the first offer. Went with the first offer. So like, I built a good relationship with Coach Zane Vance. He's a, he's a great guy. Whatever. He he, uh, you know, came to the house. Mom loved him, and um, he he made me feel like like I had guidance if I went there. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? So like, I didn't like when I went to other visits or talked to other coaches. They were all focused on them. Like he made me feel like, all right, what other school are you talking to? Let's say Boston College, you know, it's like, okay, they're a good school, you should look into this, that, da, da, da. Ain't talk down on them. Like, it goes back to that, like, all right, yeah, we're in competition, I ain't gonna talk down on you, but I still want this recruit. Like, it goes back to that competition piece. So, like, he never talked down. Like, even when I went to Akron, took a visit to Akron, whatever, and uh, and talked to their coach, they talked down on Kent. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That's a problem. But it never, never the opposite. Like, kid, like we never talked down on them. So, like, they made me feel wanted or whatever and feel like I had guidance there. Though, so, uh, if I had to do it all again, like the Hoover recruiting process, I would have went to uh, Central Florida. Yeah? Yeah, that's what I, I had an offer from, well, an offer opportunity from Central Florida. Coach flew up and he asked me before, you know, before we had you this scholarship, uh, are you willing to be that far away from home? I mean, you know me, I'm a mom's boy. Like, so I'm like, nah. Like, you know what I mean? I, 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 my mom can't come see me play. Like, you got to hop on a flight, whatever. But I'm just like, nah. And then I just st st continue my recruiting yeah, process. At that time, Central Florida was not Central Florida. They, they wasn't Central Florida. But it, it would have became Central Florida. When I was there, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was uh, Blake Bortles and those dudes. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, our that senior year would have been a Fiesta Bowl. Yeah. So I was just like. I mean, I, I don't regret nothing, unless get, not get that mistaken. But if I did it back again, just just the experience being in the down south mm -hmm. in the sunshine, sunshine state, Orlando, Florida, Orlando, Florida. Mickey Mouse. Man, I, <laughs> I, I might not be here doing the podcast. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's just like it's just little things like that. It's just like, but I, I enjoyed my time, kid, and I, I enjoyed the recruiting process. Took full advantage of it. Um, I took all my visits, but. One, I believe. Uh, um, was yeah. you close to going anywhere else? Uh, or was Kent always like at the top? And this is like, man. So this, no. This so so here's the deal. So if Pitt would have offered me my junior year, I would have went to Pitt. Mm. You know what I mean? But they didn't. They was on this guy from out uh, east or whatever. Like it was, I was like third on their chart. They picked him second, whatever. So if they would offered me my junior year, I would have went there. Yeah. But then once I made that full commitment. To Kent, they offered me, mm -hmm. trying to get me to decommit and go to Pitt, whatever. But by that time, it's just like I'm, I'm on Kent, like yeah. regardless of anything. But uh, them or uh, Ohio and Buffalo, mm -hmm. like so those two, those are close. Uh, but Ohio screwed themselves because they pulled my scholarship because I didn't commit when one of my teammates committed to them, yeah. and they wanted a package. I'm like, I'm not a package. Like, I'm, I'm a solo artist. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we ain't doing that. Like you know what I mean? That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm on Jada. <laughs> I ain't got to be with the locks. I'm just kidding. Facts. But uh, <laughs> but then I remember laying on the couch, got a call from head coach, Solis. Man, docked it up real nice. Yeah, well, you know, we're going to score other options. You know, we had to detackle it. Da, 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 da. I'm happy, all right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then they came back to the school, and they had, they seen me, they was talking to my teammate, and they said, you know what I mean, you, did you ever consider coming back? You know, we gave you the offer? I'm like, nah. Yeah. It's over. Like, y'all had me. I liked them. Uh -huh. They had me, but nah. So, but nah, it, uh, it was out of them. Yeah. yeah. That's dope. So, whenever you got to Kent, what was the biggest transition for you from high school to college? 
the biggest transition really uh, was just like learning that like you actually have to do your work. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like let's be real about it. Like learning that you actually have to do your work. Like ain't no Miss Brown can do. Nah, they, they don't care. Like you know what I mean? And, and and the demand of it, like, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, the time demand, like, the you're, you're demanding so many different places that you don't know how to react to it, you still wanna live your life. But yeah, like, learning how to manage it. So, like, you wanna, you obviously are there for a sport, whatever, but to play that sport, you gotta have your grades. But you also wanna have a social life. Mm -hmm. So, like, trying to manage those three uh, loads is, like, difficult, and as a freshman, if you don't have the guidance, like, it was tough, like, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm trying to party on a Thursday and still try to go to 8 a.m. class on a Friday. Mm -hmm. Like, so it was just like learning, that learning, that first semester was just like trial and error. Like, you know what I mean? So that first semester, like, I was homesick, learning, doing everything on my own and still trying to have a good time to where if I can't get something done, it's just like, forget it, man. We got a party to go to. Like, <laughs> it's just like, it was tough. Like, it was to the point to where, like, I would, like, had my mom, like every home game, she would get a hotel, like it's an hour, two hours away. Every home game, get a hotel just so I could feel like comfort. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just comfort. Like, even though it's only two hours away, it was just like you're so far away still. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just like, I needed that. Like, you know, it was to the point to where, like, I was like, I was so, like, homesick that, like, I remember after the game, we played OU at OU that. And I'm probably just now, they will find out they're watching this. <laughs> Play OU at OU. And my mom drove up to the game, whatever. I'm like, yo, I want to come home. Like, you know what I mean? I want to go back to Kent. She said, what you mean you want to come home? I said, I need to come home. Like, you know what I mean? So she drove from Athens to Kent or whatever on her way home. Picked me up. It's probably like 12 a.m. or whatever. And I go home. So next day, we got film and stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. I don't go. I call my coach in the middle of the night, bro. <laughs> Like, listen, I have family emergency. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I got family emergency. Um, I forget what I said, uh, but I, I'm going to be a few days. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't go back, bro, until Wednesday. <laughs> so from Saturday to Wednesday, I needed that. I needed that. Like, yeah. you don't understand what it did to my mind. Like, I needed that comfort. So, like, and we play Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I missed Monday was workout, whatever. I missed Tuesday practice. Came Wednesday. I'm like, I'm back. Like, you know what I mean? Everything okay? Yeah, everything okay. You know what I mean? Handle yeah, it. Yeah. So, like, I, I, like, made a lie about family emergency just so I can, like, feel comfort. Like, you know what I mean? You really a mama's boy, boy. Like, because uh, my mom would have been like, boy, well, yeah, right. <laughs> my mom would have been like, yeah, I ain't coming to get you. But, but hey, no, like, if, and, and, <laughs> no, definitely for sure, though. But it, I think it's just because, like, even, like, you know, like I said, like, my parents split. So, that was comfort for her too. Yeah, like you yeah. know what I mean? I, like so it's like her baby boy is gone. Uh -huh. Like you know what I mean? This is my comfort too. Like I'm gonna do what I can. Yeah, like you yeah. know what I mean? So like it, it played. I think I think that didn't. I mean it, it helped me, but it didn't. It didn't help the fact that like she was the same way as me type mm -hmm. stuff. Like you know what I mean? So yeah, I definitely needed that. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you feel like? You started getting used to being on campus, being away from your mom, and kind of starting your own routine at camp. After that, after that freshman, uh, that first semester, really, like, I slowly but surely started like not coming home as much, and like just like, all right, this is here, because I seen, I played as a true freshman. Mm -hmm. I bought out, did my thing, whatever. So I'm like, oh, this is life. I seen the tension I was getting, like, you know, as a true freshman, and not even really putting in the work. It's just mm -hmm. natural ability. So I'm like, all right. So it just created friendships, like start hanging with people or whatever. And then by my sophomore year, like the relationship that I built my sophomore year, that's what really helped me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Just, I, it was a slow, like, then I started going, instead of on, on a break, instead of coming back to Pittsburgh, I go to Columbus with Rose or, you know what I mean? Or, or Virginia with Paul, like, you know what I mean? Things like that. So, and like that, 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 uh, I put the nail in the coffin and they were like, man, you good. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You good. Then by my junior, freshman, I mean, junior, senior year, I barely came home. Like, I come home for a couple weeks and back out. So you said that you was you was playing, you was balling as a freshman without even putting in the work. When did you realize that, like, if I start working, I could really take my game to the next level? 
when we got a new coaching staff. Like, uh, what after, year was that? after my sophomore year. So, like, even going to my sophomore year, so a little quick. So, freshman year. So, after my freshman year is done, I, I don't even go back up Kent because they, they ain't paying for nothing, whatever. They want us up there. And by this time, my uh, great grandmother passed away. So, like, now I'm home and then I, uh, dealing with all that and whatnot. So, I'm like, I'm just home then. Like, um, living, living, living the college life, partying, doing this, doing that. And I, I, I didn't even lead up to camp. I didn't do no workout. I did a couple push-ups. I always on push-ups because dad used that as punishment, but I was always on push-ups. So I did a few push-ups for a week. Looked like I did something all summer. I got up there. I'm their starting defensive tackle this year. So it's just like, oh, we good shape. Like, you know what I mean? This is not. So uh, still nothing. Like, I ain't working out. Like, doing a little, you working out, but you ain't putting in that work. So we had coach got fired or whatever the case may have been, and we got Coach Hazel, great coach. He brought in a strength coach from Ohio State, Coach Doug Davis. Uh, you know, God rest his soul, he passed away. Great strength. He 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 pinpointed everything on every athlete he got. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? So he wants this to where I feel like my previous one is Olympic lifter. I'm not Olympic lifter. We coming from the port. We ain't power cleaning. We ain't doing none of that. I'm just doing it. Yeah. So his he's all speed training, which I love. Like you know what I mean? So it's just like. Okay, so once I start doing it, start seeing shit. He took the before and after pictures, yeah, and doing something man, what? Did it? I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, I look like that. It's just like, okay, yeah, ah. <laughs> so that that triggered in my head, and during the year, balled out. Then so like going to my senior year, it was just like it worked. So yeah. leading to your senior year. I did my internship with him. Uh -huh. So, like, he, he was just like, all right, I'm going to teach you for an hour. Then you can work out and do what you want do this or that. I get two workouts in a day. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So, and he, he's helping. So, like, I, I got up to 295. Mm. Like, and saw, like, I was decent. Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't on no, like, sloppy stuff. So, like, doing that and, like, hitting the weights strong. I feel how strong I was. And, you know what I mean? I could still move. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yo. I trust this dude, you know what I mean? So once I got that trust, so those two years, so after my sophomore year is when I really put in that work. Yeah. And numbers-wise, if you looked at the numbers from my first two years to my second two years, it shows. Because even like my senior year at Kent, uh, me and Rose was a uh, title, uh, we was top five defensive tackle duos in the country. Yeah. Just like in the country, bro. Like, And that's coming from... Uh, against Power 5 conference players, all that. Like, So being top five tandem and... I got 50 tackles, he got 50, like 57 tackles. And that's crazy because, like, y'all did that. Y'all was both undersized linemen. Undersized linemen. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, it was crazy. Like, we was doing that. Like, between us two, we had over 100 tackles in a, in a season. Yeah. Over 15 I sacks. I did tackle. I did tackle. Like, you got to pick your poison. Like, so it's like, he's an All American. He, he jumped on the scene early. All American. All right, let's double team him. All right, we'll leave him. I'm a dog, you too. Uh, like, you know what I mean? So, like, all right, so what are you going through? So to be that, coming from like a mid-major school was like huge to me. So once I seen that, I'm like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm like, ah, yeah. hell man. What was it What was it like? So you did your freshman year, your sophomore year. Junior year, you took that next step. Senior year, as a team, y'all took that next step. Mm -hmm. What do you think was the difference between the teams that you had previously to the team that went to the MAC championship? Um, guidance, coaching, like, you know what I mean, and because they made you believe. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean, we knew it was good. My class, we was the number one recruiting class in the MAC uh, coming in uh, in 2009. So we knew we were good, but it's just believing it now and having everyone else believe. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, we had a slogan that one team, one destiny. Like, you know what I mean? So we all had this one destiny, this one goal. You know what I mean? So once we start believing in that, everything clicked. All right, we so won the culture this. switch. Culture switch. You know what I mean? So it's just like, and it started junior year really because we was, we went, we won our last out last six out seven games or something like that. So like we was on a roll like, and once we're like, dang. And then our last game we played Temple, and we would have won, we would have been bowl eligible. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? So we was like, we could do this. So coming into that next year. We start believing. Because even, think about this. My junior year, we played Alabama the year they won the national championship. Mm -hmm. Trent Richardson, this yeah. boy Orms was like this together. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They had A.J. McCarron and all them guys. You know what I mean? Dante Hightower. So, all summer, all spring, all summer, Coach, 
excuse me, Coach Davis, man, you couldn't tell me we wasn't upset in Alabama. Yeah. You could not <laughs> tell me we wasn't upset in Alabama. What was the score? <laughs> Listen, it, 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 it was like, it was like, it was like, it was like, it was like 49, 14, something like that. But, but as a defense, we had like five turnovers. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? The yeah. uh, offense had a few struggles, like, but defense, we held our own. Like, you know what I mean? But you couldn't tell me, all, I, as boys and, man, watch, we beat Alabama. We the, meanwhile, going against them boys, like, I remember I got hemmed up quick by the center. He, where you going? <laughs> I'm like, try to hit his arm down. I was like, I gotta play my game. I gotta play the quick uh, game. But not nah, like it, it, culture switch, like you said, though. Like make you believe. And I think that's that's pivotal, especially in coaching. Like if, if I can get you to believe, man, run through that wall. I can run through that wall. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? So they they had this thing we could believe, and then once it all start playing out, playing out. Oh shit! Yeah, we we we, we can. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So uh, that that was the switch right there. That that was the difference in. You know the success that we had the last few years. I was there. Yeah, I mean, the coach is the biggest thing, man. I always say, a head coach to be a good head coach, you got to be able to manage a game, you got to be able to create a culture, and you got to be able to recruit. Oh, absolutely. Those three things you have to be able to do. And it sounds like your coach was able to to create a culture. And, and to this day, like Coach has a great relationship. He had like to where it's like you know, you know, you know, uh, you get heated moments in football. You fight, you ready for the blows. Yeah, man, you you get punished for fight. Like, ain't none of that going on. Y'all brothers. I remember the first few years of college, and uh, my first few years, you offense on defense. I really don't bang with you. Like, you know what I mean? It's like hate. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, what up? <laughs> Meanwhile, like, we supposed to be brothers. Like, but that's the culture it was. Like, when I walked into, like, I remember, like, just having, like, I remember my freshman year, like, shock. There was a big brawl, like, offense, defense brawl. And I didn't even jump in. I'm just like, going on, like, you know what I mean, like, I, this ain't what we do, so, like, that whole culture change, so when he came, and none of that, none of that was like, yeah, you're getting your little hostile things, whatever, but it, it's dead right there, it's dead right there, so now, one of my, one of my good friends, one of my best friends, it was an offensive tackle now, you know, he played in the league, and we had a great relationship, like, we going against each other every day in practice, like, you know what I mean, but that culture allowed, that culture uh, allowed us to, all right, understand, we competing, yeah. I'm getting your best, you getting my best. But then the day when we leave here, it leaves here. You my brother. Yeah, and then with that, you come game time. Whenever the offense is on the field, and it's your turn to go on the field. It's like I gotta make sure I hold my brother down. They did what they had to do on the offense, and now it's my turn to re return that. And, exactly. And it was like and early on. There's a lot of time like we don't look. We know offense. They suck. Uh -huh. Like you know what I mean, dude. Like that was our mindset. But like later on, it's just like we we up now. It's it's crunch time. Let's go. Yeah, yeah I man. Let's go. Yeah, you run on the field with them. Good stuff. You know what I mean? That's what we doing. So. Yeah, that culture is just that's that's a that's a huge piece. Man. How was you able to balance playing the sport, going to school with your social life? Because you was outside. I was outside. You, you, I was, you was outside. outside. You was outside. You was outside. <laughs> so how, how was you able to, to enjoy the life that you had in college and then step on the field and know that this is this is different. We gotta make sure we turn it on. Because I I looked at I look back outside as like a reward. Like, you know what I mean? It came to the point where like I learned, I matured after that freshman year, like, I gotta get my stuff done. No matter how I get it done, which we get a story about, no matter how I get it done, I'm gonna get it done and then I'm outside. Like, you know what I mean? Like they I like I, I used to like That's like that's like as a kid. You know, yeah, you know, worry about outside. outside. <laughs> get my knees dirty. You know what I mean? I'm getting dirty. You know what I mean? So, so like I looked at it like that, like I try to get my work done or or like try to find ways to manage, which, you know, caught up with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I almost got kicked out of school. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you know the story, so it's just like African time management. Went to go do a paper at a friend's house and it got late. They was like, I'll do it for you, don't worry about it. Say no more. All right. <laughs> All right. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm leaving practice the next day. I'm like, oh, you bring this paper, you know what I mean? Blah blah blah. Yeah, it's coming now. Bring me the paper. I look at it. The work cited page has got like a summer date. Meanwhile, it's mm -hmm. fall. So I'm like, it's live. I'll just wait it out. Wait it out. <laughs> Go to class. I had it in. The following week. I get a call or a text saying, 
I need you to come to my office from an academic event. I need you to come to my office. I'm like, damn, I hate those things. <laughs> like, I'm like, damn, what I do? Like, you know what I mean? And, uh, but it's just like, she said, well, you, you're a virgin getting kicked out of school. What you mean about virgin? Like, you, you plagiarize your paper for this class or whatever. Like, I said, how I plagiarize? I didn't even write the paper. Like, I said, oh, I didn't even write the paper. I don't plagiarize it. Like, you know what I mean? She's like, what you mean you ain't write the paper? Man, I some chick wrote it for me. You know what I mean? Da, 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 da. When I tell y'all about this all the time, I let these girls write your paper. Da, da, da. I'm like, man. I was, I was just like, well, you're going to have to see judicial affairs. And, you know what I mean? And I don't know what, what's going to happen or whatever. So this is in the morning. I got a whole day ahead of me. So I'm just zoned out. I'm like, I'm be, I'm be, like, I'm be that guy. This is my mindset. This, this is my mindset. I'm gonna be that guy that's telling stories back on the port of what I used to be. Where I got jammed up, did this, did that. I don't even got a degree to show for it. Uh -huh. And we got so many people around here. It's just like you, just another statistic in the hood. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like you ain't even got nothing to show for. That was my whole mindset all day. I'm like, and then my boys knew like. So we eat, they just like, they just look at you. Yeah, and they, <laughs> they, they catch you. Up. You know, you going through that, being in school with dudes like that, bro, they going to laugh at us. Bro, they laugh and like, just laugh like, you dummy. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm just like this, like, and with my boy Ron, he, he the biggest jokester, so he just like, boys are sick. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm ready to fight one of y'all dudes. So go to practice. Coach Mack know about it, D-line coach. I ain't, I'm, I'm jumping off sides on this. He says it. He said, I wish he said something like, man, I know you got caught up in your play, but you need to leave that there, whatever. This and that's time to focus in, or whatever, this and that. Uh, I got to class later on after practice. So I go to class and we got a debate, you know what I mean? So we're debating on uh, the uh, death penalty or whatever. It's like a justice studies class. And so we, we had the debate first. So she passed the papers out. I read, there's a paragraph on the back. This is word for word, so and so's paper. You plagiarize the whole this and that. You're gonna get an F for this class, and you know, possibly you see the. I'm like, <sighs> so I do the debate after class. I was mature. I said, "Hey, Miss, you know her name. Can I talk to you for a second? Talk to her. I said, first of all, I want to apologize for assuming your intelligence for you know this and that. Uh, but honestly, I didn't write this paper. I said straight. I said I felt which I said I felt like you know. My time management was off. I had to hurry this. I had this and that, whatever the case may be. But I just wanted to let you know I would never do nothing like that to the social intelligence. Da, da, da. Like, talk to her as, a, as an adult. So she said, she said, okay, I respect that because you handled yourself in a debate. You did this. So what I can do for you is you won't get an A in this class. The highest grade you could get is a B minus. Mm -hmm. Okay? But you rewrite this paper over and you turn it in tomorrow by midnight. Mm -hmm. It's a six-page paper, cuz. Mm -hmm. I ain't writing a six-page paper in 24 hours. Like, yeah, I was just like, so, and we traveling to Kansas State ne the next day. So, on the bus, so I wake up at 7 a.m., got to meet with the tutors in the art. Doing all that. On the bus, highlighting stuff, doing this. On the plane, doing the same. I don't get to go to meetings. I got to go up in my room, type my paper. I turn the paper in at 11.53. Mm. And I end up getting a B minus in the class because I was just like, but I was this close of just like being kicked out of school. And that, that's just because you had a relationship. That's just because they had a relationship. Like that's all that was because if you ain't, if you wasn't able to go to that teacher and have that conversation instead of saying, oh, she's weird. Yeah. Like, like, I took I ownership. I didn't even, I didn't even plagiarize. Like, she's weird. <laughs> you, you took ownership and you, and you spoke to her like, a, like an adult. And that was the difference between a B minus and you getting kicked out Right, school. absolutely. And I, I just couldn't, like, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror, look my mom in the mirror, like, you know what I mean? Just be like, damn. Because, like, and you know, coming from where we come from, when you make it to a certain point, you're viewed as the golden child. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, to let, not, you're just, you just know that you're letting yourself down and your parents, your mom, whatever down. But, little do you know, you're letting hundreds of other people down that look up to you saying, oh, he was this and that. Oh, look, I, yeah, I want to be like that. You letting them down too. Mm -hmm. and, but you don't realize that in that moment. Because the only person I thought of was me and my mom. Like, I'm like, nah, I'm like, my mom, nah, damn, I'm supposed to be the first to graduate. Like, but what about all the other little kids that, you know what I mean, came to see you play, that you go talk to, do this and that? You letting them down too. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even thinking about that until later on in life. Like, damn, I could have really let them down like that. <laughs> so, you go through that whole college experience and 
it's time to transition from college to professional life. Mm -hmm. At this point, your dreams are still, I'm going to go play in the NFL. Right, right. So you, what was the process like? What was your mindset like of going through the process of trying to be drafted, mm -hmm. um, knowing that you're an undersized lineman in the draft? What was your mindset? My mindset, I was naive, really, because I, I had a great senior year, had a name for scouts coming to practice, seeing you and stuff. So instead of doing, being smart and like, all right, let me trim down to be able to run down on special teams, do this, do that, like you understand the game, man, I can play it. I decided because after our bowl game, had a bowl game, I had a, had a hell of a bowl game, I start reading, reading into the internet. They saying I'm... I'm a sixth or seventh worth of late round draft pick, free agent at the worst. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like seeing that is just like, I just need a shot. Mm -hmm. Six round? Ah, man, listen, I can get six round. You let me in there. You let me in there, it's a wrap. So like being naive, just like having that mindset still. So it's just like, all right. So I go through that process. I go through, you know, you got to figure out your agent. The, uh, I had like five different agents that I talked to and four of them wanted me to go elsewhere and train. Like, you know what I mean? They, they seen the potential I had, wanted me to go elsewhere and train. There was one agent who was fresh. So uh, I decided to sign with him instead of the agent that I regret I signed with. He had like a second rounder, a third round. Like, he had bigger names than me. So I, I felt like I wouldn't have been a priority. But not knowing the, the business, it's the connections he had. Mm -hmm. To where I went with this guy who's, who's like a year or two in. I'm his biggest name he got. So, yeah. like, knowing that, I was just like, oh, I'm going with him then. Seems like he's picking up the phone when he called. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He so, called, he pick up the phone. so, I didn't have no guidance in that. It was just all me, like, just being naive and whatever. And just so, I went with him. And probably the biggest mistake I made after, you know, after my, after the football or whatever. So, I decided to stay in Kenton train or whatever. But then, our coach got hired at Purdue. Mm. So we got they got their new coach and they brought in their uh, strength coach and he said he'll, I mean, you guys I want to stay here and train or whatever you I'll train you you know this and that so I'm like I talked to my mom she's like I want you to graduate you know what I mean NFL is good but I want you to graduate which I'm glad she said that whatever so I sat with him said I could train here instead of going to California and train with the other agents where they had me at so I, I train with dude whatever I'm meanwhile I'm trying to graduate. He set a time for like 11 o'clock to train or whatever. I got class at 12.45. Mm, so you ain't really getting in. I ain't really get in. So I, I, I asked like, hey, I, I got to leave early for class. Can we set up a different time, you know, where I can come and get to work? Your feet work is great. You don't really need too much of this and that. Come on, man. What you mean? Like, me, me, me I'm like, uh, I mean, like I said, I ain't really have no guy. I'm like, I mean, I do got good footwork. Like, all right. Like, you know what I mean? I do a little bit. You can leave early. It's okay. All right. Meanwhile, you... It's not, but so I go, the pro day come, so the pro day's here. Uh, after the season, back, backwards real quick, after the season I was supposed to get surgery on my shoulder, whatever, but they said I would have missed, been a, not been able to do my pro day. I need my pro day, mm -hmm. like you know what I mean? So I didn't get the surgery. So that kind of like held me back, like full strength training. So you no know, pro day come. Uh, the way it was sold to us by this coach, whatever, oh yeah, we got the big name, our lineman was the big name, brought all 32 teams there. We're going to make him go last so all you guys can go, whatever, blah, blah, blah. All right, got us training the 40 on the track. Are we, you know what I mean? No, no. Oh, he'll be fine. I'll make it. He'll be okay. Ran the 40 on the track. They had 10 seconds to our time. Mm. Originally, I ran a 4.8 or 4.83 or something. On the track. On the track. No, no, yeah, yeah, on the track. But then it adds on, so then I end up running like a four nine, yeah, some some cool. bull crap to where like, like, like you know what I mean. So then go to the sizing thing, undersized lineman. Uh, so busy trying to get in shape, get right. They make you scoot all the way down. I'm five eleven and seven eighths. Mm. They don't want to give me six foot, cuz. <laughs> five eleven, seven eighths, two hundred eighty six pounds. I seen the same scout like this. Mm. I, I like I, I'm under, I'm like I kept my composure. I'm just like. Like, you know what I mean? Just like I knew. And then the bench, like I said, my strength, I couldn't really go crazy. And plus, the, I feel like the trainer was half half assed because a month later after my pro day, when I came home and trained or whatever, I did I did 31 reps. Mm -hmm. And then on pro day, I only did 20. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, it was just like, it was backwards. But then how he said he was going to have them go last, they went, for, they went, we want to see the linemen, the big linemen. They do the linemen. 
He's like, all right, when they're done, we're going to have everybody go. They're standing on the lineman. Like, they're making them get their work, like their investment. All right, D-Lineman, come over here. I had, we had, there was me and another guy. We had four scouts watching. Mm. Four scouts. There's 32 scouts here, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? You're supposed to be dictating all this. It was to the point to where, like, it was ran so poorly, I don't think our kicker got the kick. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? So it just screwed in that aspect. But, okay, then we go on from there. And then talking with my agent. He's, uh, the draft come. I don't hear nothing. I hit him up. You know, he don't hear nothing either. So, a couple weeks later, whatever, he's saying, like, we do the CFL draft, you know, da 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 this and that. When did you even register me for the CFL draft? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you ain't even tell, you didn't even do it. How are we waiting on the CFL draft? So, I asked him, I was like, yo, you hear something? He said, no, I heard a few regional combines, sent me, like, a regional combine list, whatever. I'm like, okay. Nothing after that. I hit him back, like, next week later, or two weeks later. Like, what's up, man? You hear something? Like, what's going on? You my agent. You work for me. Yeah. Like, I'm your investment. Like, you know what I mean? He said, no, I sent you the list. You, uh, I'm guessing you didn't go to none of them. Just, go to none of them? You didn't send me no money. No, <laughs> no means of transportation. Yeah, like, I don't know what to get there. Like, you know what I mean? This is not. So, I like, I started even a paragraph but saying, like, you know what I mean? You need to work on doing your business. Where at this time, I'm letting you go. You're terrible. You're da da This and that. He sent me a long paragraph back saying, like, uh... This basically like he did this, he did that. Man, you ain't do nothing. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? There's no way that I'm labeled as a six or seven round draft pick and not to get invited to a camp, a mini camp. to a mini camp, to a rookie mini camp, two day tryout, <laughs> two day. Like so, you're 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 failing on your part. Like you're not investing how you're supposed to. So like I went through all that and just end up graduating. So I'm glad my mom did say I want you to graduate and ended up coming home and started my life like. Life after football, because I finished in May, so June I came home, and you still have your dream. I'm still doing like arena stuff, right, trials, whatever, and nothing's shaking. So it's just like you regret, you regret doing all of that, or do you feel like you, I, you gave it all you had, so you go? With so, it? so my first when I first came home from school when I was done, I was I was picked. At, I worked as a janitor. Mm -hmm. Like worked as a janitor. I'm cleaning bathrooms and you know what I mean with a degree. <laughs> I got an education degree. I'm I'm working as a janitor just because my boy got me a job. Boom, jump in. I still got this mindset like I can play football. Like you know what I mean. I can still play. I'm still working. And uh, so that whole year, and then I get a I get an opportunity to play arena. I get an arena con. I got like seven arena contract. Like and arenas watered down now. For people who don't know, so it's really not what it used to be. Yeah. So like I get like seven arena contracts after this little combine thing I did. They love me. So I signed with a team. Uh, this was in February. So I quit that job. Signed with a team. Report date was in like March or something like that. And at this time, I really had a like come to Jesus talk. Like you got a daughter on the way. Like this time, Emery's becoming like you know what I mean. She's almost here. She's born in April. So, and I'm thinking in my head like, what type of father am I to go here to make this little bit of money, and miss my daughter growing? I'm like, so I did a no show, no call, no nothing. Like I signed for a job. I ain't do no show. They reached out. I'm not coming. I got better, bigger priorities. So from there, it's just like, my daughter was born, and and I passed up on all that opportunity to be a father. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? Which I don't regret at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Either. So so and and I look at it like that same opportunity came about when I was twenty five I think it came about where I got uh, invited to play arena in South Dakota or whatever Sioux Falls and I just a long shot and I sat down talked with my daughter's mom and my mom and like hey what y'all think like you know this opportunity and they both said like you pass it up the first time it came around so this you know what I mean take it. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just like, I took it. The leap of faith just took it. Like, by this time, I done lost hella weight. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not what I used to be, but I still got it. Yeah. So I go out there, and I dog them. Like, you know what I mean? I'm running with the ones. Like, they can't block me. They can't do nothing. And so, like, I'm getting it. But here comes the business side of it. They bring in a guy from the CFL, 6'7", first day. He, um, he can't tie his shoes tight. Like, you know what I mean? So... The next day was like cuts. He pulls me into the office and it's just like, you know, listen, you're a hell of a player. 
our linemen could not do nothing with you. They couldn't do this and that, whatever. We're just looking for a little bit more size. Mm. You know what I mean? So hearing that coming from, like, I like, just like, I was okay with it. Like, and so me and my boy that I drove up there, we both got cut. So I was okay with it. Like, I'm just like, damn. So I go back to the hotel. I'm laying around. They say, you know, you can leave in the morning. I'm laying around. I like, my boy, man, we leave it now, man. We ain't getting home. Like, you know what I mean? So like, and so on the way home, uh, I'm getting calls from like starters like, yo, where you at? I'm like, bro, I got cut. What? You got cut? Man, you turn on the film, they couldn't do nothing with me. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? So, so that gave me the satisfaction that I need that, like, I gave it all I got. I got it. I got I, All I needed was people's respect to know that I had it, that I could play at that level. The business part, my size part, I can't help that. Nah, like, you know what I mean? I can't help that. So it's just like, once, once I walked away from that and I took that leap of faith, I was okay with it. Like, I was like, okay, God got better plans for me. Like, you know what I mean? This is what I'm going to do. Like, you know what I mean? And... I took the, <laughs> the words of my boy because we both got cut. And he's, he's like, damn it. I'm talking to him. Rose, what I talked to him. Yeah, man, we both got cut this and that. We about to drive. I'm driving to Columbus. I'm, we about to drive to the crib. He said, man, that's a long damn bro ride. <laughs> yeah. he's like, you just look at your boy like, damn, bro. <laughs> I was like, yo. Yeah, but it was just like humor and so we're just like, I'm okay with it. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't regret nothing. Like, I was okay knowing that, like, boys know, like, that boy's a dog. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? And I'm okay with it. That's the After you have your damn bro ride, <laughs> what was the next step? What was your, so, what was your mindset, like, knowing that you're transitioning out of football completely? Uh, my mindset was, like, I had, like, I think what a lot of athletes go through, like, close to, like, a mental breakdown, kind of, like, because for so long, I don't want to say mental breakdown because I, I wasn't that point, I, that bad, but for so long, this is all we know. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Since the age four or five years old. Identity. Yeah, that, that's who we are. So, like, to transition out of that, it was just, like, it's hard to let go. Like, and it plays a part in, like, Want to be bothered with people, like, you know what I mean? Mood swings, like, you know what I mean? Seasonal depression is real. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, I would, like, go through, like, especially, I would go through, like, certain dark periods, like, where just, I couldn't even explain things. Like, it's just like, I'm here and I don't know how I got here. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And you don't realize that a lot of the time, like, sports or, you know, things was your outlet. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, so whereas you, you really, you, you could have been in these dark spots, but you didn't realize it because you was busy handling something you loved. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, I, it was just tough, like, trying to transition into find my happiness. Like, you know what I mean? Find, I mean, I found happiness within my daughter and, you know, things like that. But, like, as far as, like, just different things, like, other than outside of the family uh, part of it, it's just, like, you lean, like me, like you said, like, I was outside. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So I leaned a lot on, like, going out, like, drinking and, like, just abusing, drink, like, just partying, like, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I never did drugs. I never was into drugs, but just drinking like crazy, like, you know what I mean? Just, like, so, like, trying to suppress that darkness that's, that that you feel, like, you know what I mean, with, with that. It's just, it was just tough. That's what I felt like. So, like, coming from being an athlete for the last 20-plus years and just transitioning to not having it in your life is just, like, like somebody takes something from you without without you wanting it taken. Like you know what I mean? And, uh, what advice would you give to somebody that's transitioning out of their sport into the professional life? Um, understand that like you know mental health is real. Like you know what I mean? Like it's just like no matter how mentally tough we are as athletes, no matter how how real we want to be. Don't be don't be scared to identify the problem. Like you know what I mean. Like like take take that stuff serious. So like find find peace. You know what I mean. So whether like for example for me, I found I found peace by like meditating. Like you know what I mean. Waking up each morning, drinking tea, listening to gospel mu music, meditating. You know what I mean. Clear my mind, start my day off fresh. Like for a while, like that helped me get out of dark dark uh, places. Uh, so like find your your your, your happiness, some that find your peace. So like identify the problem, find a solution to it. You know what I mean, don't be scared to talk to someone. 
Like, uh, and just and just go from there. Like, it's not going to be easy at all. Uh, Status Podcast. Podcast.